Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Best Ever You Show. I'm Elizabeth Hamilton Garino here with author Jennifer Cassetta. Jennifer, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Elizabeth. Yeah. So there's her website, everybody. We're going to have a girl chat about being, you know, like a badass, badassery, all those, all those good things. So grab your coffee, right? We, we're holding our coffee up. Grab your coffee. Mine's got the main flag on it. <laughs> and grab her book. If you don't have her book, here it is. You guys can go on Amazon. You want to hold it up too? I know you yes. both have a moment here with your book. There it is. Isn't it beautiful? Brand new. When did this come out? August 23rd. August 23rd. So it's pretty much brand new. So it's yes. sitting in the airwaves. Okay. There's her website. I'm going to take mm -hmm. that down. Um, maybe, maybe not. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. There we go. <laughs> and there our names pop up. So anyway, girl chat. This is a cool book. What Thank made you write this book? Well, um, after two decades of teaching self-defense, physical self-defense, and actually, you know, health coaching and empowerment coaching, um, I started to just get actually very frustrated um, seeing so many stories and hearing so many stories that landed on my in my lap of women being um, talked over, manipulated, talked down to, and then verbally, mentally, physically, and even spiritually abused. Um, I wanted to provide a framework for folks, not just the physical self-defense on how to protect our bodies, but how to protect ourselves emotionally, mentally, and spiritually as well. So that's why I created this framework um, that I use martial arts as a metaphor. So the book um, is essentially a deeper dive than my keynote called The Art of Badassery that I started about eight years ago. And we take women from white belt to black belt in badassery. I love it. So here's the thing. Um, I'm a mom of four sons. They are all in their 20s and my husband's in the other room. So I basically live with five guys. And wow. one thing I wanted to mention as we're reading this is, you know, I hope guys pick this up too. Me too. I really do because it's a, it's a, uh, a perspective of like how we're treated. And it's like, oh, half of them aren't even aware we're treated like that. Right. <laughs> exactly. And I have had lots of men actually read it and, and leave some Amazon reviews. So I was, I'm happily surprised that they're doing it. Yeah. So, so tell me about um, just more about your journey. Like who are you? How'd you get started? You know, all those good things for the, for our audience who may or may not know you. Absolutely. Um, about 22 years ago in New York city, I stepped into a dojo for the first time, a martial arts studio as back then as a way just to get fit. I was bored of going to the gym early in my 20s. And I, I fell in love with martial arts. It was a martial art. It is a martial art called Hapkido. It's a Korean style that I studied. And um, essentially within that first year, I just had some life altering events happen to not just me, but thousands and thousands of people as well. That first event being September 11th, that really changed the course of not just my career, but I'm pretty sure my entire life. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, I'll, I'll tell the story quickly, but the story, the, the story starts the book where uh, I showed up to work on September 11th in New York, three blocks south of the World Trade Center. And when I got out of the subway, the towers had already been hit and black smoke was coming out of them. I made it to the place of work. They wouldn't let me upstairs. Instead, I used the phone in the lobby to call my mom, let her know I was maybe, maybe okay. Right? Yeah. But seconds later, the first tower fell and a swarm of people came rushing into the lobby Phone went flying. I got pushed into this utility closet with strangers and felt like I was going to die. So my body shut down. I was completely paralyzed by fear until this woman came over to me, grabbed me by the shoulders, asked me my name. I said, Jennifer. She said, Jennifer, I'm Nancy. And the two of us were going to get out of here today. And sure enough, we did. We all got evacuated from the building. And Nancy and I stayed together and you know, went from building to building to building, looking for a safe place and for hours until I had the idea to take Nancy to the dojo. And when we entered that day, it was the first time that I felt safe. I was able to breathe and downregulate the nervous system, do all the things, you know, that I didn't know I was doing at the time, but I can see looking back that was giving me a, 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 a sense of safety. Nancy left. I've never seen her since. Still looking for her. Um, mm -hmm. And essentially that became this metaphor, right? For my life that all I wanted to do in the weeks and months afterwards was go to this dojo. I was out of a job, bartending to pay the bills at night. And in the daytime, I would just go there, 
get onto the mat, right? Off with the street clothes, on with the uniform, tie the belt around my waist in this methodical, like slow, almost meditation, connect mm -hmm. mind, body, spirit, and really just sweat it out on the mat. Um, I, I didn't know it at the time, but now obviously looking back, I can see how um, I really worked through some serious PTSD um, mm -hmm. and, and really felt th this sense of purpose that I never felt before. Physically in my body, I was feeling stronger. Mentally, emotionally, I was feeling more confident and spiritually more purposeful to the point where I said, how can I make this a career? So it started in the physical with more personal training and then health coaching. And then fast forward to a decade or so later. Or yeah. Well, now two, de two decades. Two decades. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm dating myself, but two okay. decades then, uh, for the for the actual book to come out. Yeah. 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 Congratulations. So we're both HCI authors. So we just want to take a moment to thank everybody over at HCI for all that you do. Our books are we're happy with our lovely, beautiful books. And Big time. And, you know, I just got the coolest message from somebody over the weekend who was like, you, your book has completely changed my life. You know, one of those. And you're like, I love that. wow, random stranger saying you've completely changed my life. It just right? it made me just stop and pause and mm -hmm. just remember how how important these moments are. Because it could be just yeah. like one person who hears you mm -hmm. and you completely helped them. Um, is is that how you operate or how? Yeah. yeah yes, I, I got one a couple of weeks ago saying I've been in therapy for a year. Um, and she said it was nothing about, you know, traumatic, just like kind of everyday stress that led her to, to see a therapist. Um, and she said, your book is helping me more in one week than I, than it did all year with a therapist. And I'm not, not to take anything away oh, from gosh. therapy or therapist. I think it's really helpful. Um, but when I, again, when I read that, I was just like, wow, sometimes it's the right wording, the right way the message is presented. Um, that just hits home for one person out there. And it, yeah, it, yeah. it's pretty life-changing. I agree. Ends. Sometimes we, as life coaches, we have to explain the difference between therapy and life coaching and therapy mm -hmm. really works in it to help you with your past and so forth. And life coaching sort of meets you in that moment and helps you move forward and stuff. So right. it's a really good book to help you to meet you in this moment and, and help you move forward. Now I've got my, my list of questions here, but I might abandon the questions a little bit. Um, I kind of want you to go through chapter by chapter. Sure. Um, if you want, if you want to and have time, mm -hmm. I think that'd be really useful for people because I, I think we want to make a note to people or say to people that, you know, this isn't going to teach you um, how to, you know, it's not a, a black belt, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a, it's a self-help book. Right. Help me, yeah. Explain that a little bit to us. You yes. know, end up with a black belt for re real or whatever. This is not anyway. about punches and kicks, yeah. right? It is about <laughs> developing the inner strength it takes to get yeah. back up after you've been knocked down by any type of opponent, whether that opponent be a financial hardship, a disease diagnosis, a breakup, a divorce, a manipulative relationship, a terrible boss, right? Really any Never. any hardship, um, this is going to give you the framework to build that inner strength. Yeah. And it, it starts with, best. huh? <laughs> it help you be your best. Total most badass self, right? Yes. Um, the first chapter is the white belt and it's entitled uh, Embrace the Suck because life is not one long, smooth ride and either is getting onto the mat for the first time. You're going to be doing all these uncomfortable things with your body. You're going to get sore. You're going to get punched for the first time. Like all these things that feel very bad. <laughs> yeah. um, but kind of accepting the fact that, hey, no one gets out of this life alive without challenges, hardships, heartaches, disappointments. Right? We all, we all go through them. So just accepting them as a fact that that's going to happen can help us move forward through life. And there's a few exercises in the book, in the, sorry, in that chapter that will help you um, truly embrace the suck by creating your greatest, can I say this? We're live. You, you say whatever you want to say. Okay. Our greatest shit list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Okay. And that, that list just helps you go into your past and think of all of those times where you were you know, under the covers, not wanting to get out of bed in the morning or figure thinking like, how am I going to get through this? Yeah. And just recognizing that you did get through them and then recognizing the strength that you've developed because of them. Yeah. So that's, that's chapter well, one. 
you know, I, I want to go back here for a second. Yeah. I, we're going to go a little bit into detail. Go to page 16 with me on your book if you want okay. to. Sure. Um, I, I really like this first chapter. Sometimes I read the first and last chapters of book to determine whether I'm going to read the middle part of it or not, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I love page 16 because it's a lot of what we do as human beings when we're in pain. And really what you're saying is, mm, I don't think those are quite the right things to be to be doing in a way. And and then you flip over to an exercise getting naked. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so talk about these pages for a minute because this is where we're going to go all uncomfortable. Yes, it is uncomfortable to examine the armor that we pick up when we're going through a hard time. So whether you're avoiding a, a painful past or a challenging period you're going through right now, um, this part of the chapter will help you examine what types of armor, again, quotes um, that we use. And we pick up armor to protect ourselves. So sometimes it could be very helpful in the moment. What, what becomes not so helpful over time is when we carry that armor into our future. Um, so the armors that I listed, and there are probably way more than this, are defensiveness, denial, fixing, wanting to fix the problem for everyone and everything, numbing, using alcohol, drugs, food, social media, video games, TV, overworking, um, shopping, <laughs> if any of those ring no, too No, shopping can't be on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Running away yeah. or deflecting. Um, so those are all types of armors that we armor that we pick up to protect ourselves, but we just want to make sure that we remember to put them down when we're safe um, and to really create that safety for ourselves. And then over on page 20, what do you want us to do exactly? <laughs> mm. To get naked. <laughs> Name a difficult situation that you're facing right now. Just think about it. Bring it to mind. And ask yourself, are you feeling very defensive and confrontational when the situation arises? Um, and are you bringing that confrontation into other areas of your life? Are you trying to pretend like it's not ha happening and burying your head in the sand? I know a lot of folks that do that. Yeah. Um, are you going out of your way to placate others or fix the situation to make sure you know that everyone else is okay? Um, are you developing brain-numbing habits like binging on Netflix or food or Instagram for hours? Are you using food to numb out or feel control? Are you overdoing the vino or maybe some other types of, um, could be drugs or smoking or whatever yeah. You yeah. folks use, uh, burying yourself in work to avoid the issue? Left the situation completely. Do you use humor, like, over like overdoing the humor um, to cover it up? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So choose more difficult situations from your past and follow those same prompts. Essentially, what we're what we're looking for are patterns that we use in our life during these difficult difficult times or seasons of suck. Like I like took all of them um, and just examine them. And and the the point is never to judge yourself for using this armor. It's really just to observe. Right. And when we observe, when we become aware of these things, that's where the power comes in, because now we can use it with discernment. Now we can say, oh, OK, I picked up this armor. Right. I'm being defensive because it did help me get out of an abusive relationship. But you know what? Going forward, I don't want to ever have to use that again. I'm going to drop the armor for now and, and because I'm safe. Right. And I'm out of that relationship and really just. Use it with discernment. Pick it up when you need it. Put it down when you don't. Yeah. So, I, you know, I really love this book because, you know, I love people and books that actually change lives. You know, when you when you open up the first chapter of the book, you know, there's work involved and and <laughs> yeah. there's real work involved. But when you what happens when you do the work? Now, I think mm -hmm. I know the answer to that question, but I'm going to ask you, you know, what happens when you actually invest the time and energy into chapter one and do the work? I mean, it, I think it makes all the difference, right? You can read, you know, I have a stack of, pers a whole bookshelf of personal help, yeah. personal growth, self-help books, you know, dating back from the 80s and beyond, um, that if I didn't do the work, I wouldn't have gotten anything out of them. Um, I love doing exercises in the books. I love to go to workshops and personal growth, you know, seminars. I'm I'm all about doing the work. <laughs> Yeah. Because otherwise you're just reading words on a page. So if you, you don't internalize all the lessons, it's like, what's the point? But really it's about um, 
I think what you get out of it is self-awareness. Yeah. Now, what if somebody's listening right now and they're like, Ooh, I really like her messaging, her books, her, her, everything about her. What if, what if people want to work with you? Can they work with you one-on-one? That's a question we just got in as we were talking. So somebody would like to, to work with you. So I have, I haven't been working one-on-one with folks in a while. That doesn't mean I won't, or that won't change, but I do want, I am creating um, an eight week course to go through the, the, this book with folks together as a group. Yeah. Good. Okay. And then there's your website too, which we had up and I'll put that up later. Reach out. Oh yeah. Okay. So that's chapter one, white belt, embrace the suck. Mm -hmm. Keep going for us. So I'm on chapter two. I'm going to be a yellow belt now, right? Yes, you are. Yellow belt is all about how to bounce back, how to get up or avoid the takedown altogether. So three strategies Mm -hmm. I learned on the mat are one, the pivot, moving out of the way of an incoming assault, right? So avoid the takedown. I feel like we've all mastered the pivot over the last few years. When something isn't working, we change direction. So whether we had to work from home, change career, uh, homeschool your kids, we got that. The second strategy is to roll with the punches. This one might be a little harder. Yeah. This is when life is throwing you not one, but two and three and over and over challenges in a row. And you just feel like, whoa. On the mat, we learn to tuck ourselves, embrace the impact, right? Take the impact and roll backwards in a tiny ball, using that momentum to reverse the direction to get us back on our feet with more velocity and ease each time. So essentially we're practicing how to fall and get back up, fall and get back up because it does become easier each time. It's like a muscle. So in life, that's kind of like, well, how do we do that? And in the chapter, I list steps. Number one is find your people, find people that have been through the same challenges that you're going through. Um, and you know, I have so many examples in my life, but recently, essentially I had to get a hip, a total hip replacement, right. And I just got it at 45 years old. So it's a very young age for that type of surgery. And when I was first told that I needed it, I freaked out and I was asking my friends for advice. And I started to realize that my friends had no idea, right. They're giving me advice like blindly, do the surgery, put it off. And finally I was like, okay, I need to find people that have been through this exactly. So I did. And I found people in my family, but also a a private group on Facebook called Young People with Total Hip Replacements. And I was like, perfect. These are my people. I can ask questions, share my stories, share my concerns, share my fears, and they are there to support me. And now I'm there to support those going through it. So I know it sounds obvious, but who do you go for, for advice? Who are you surrounding yourself with? It's really, really important to find the right people when you're going through a hard time. I'm going to interrupt you for a second and just say, you know, I'm, I'm glad you shared that story because another big point with it also is that when you share your story out loud, it connects with people and they hear you and so forth. As you were talking, I was thinking, um, I was trying not to, I was trying to listen to not respond, but I'm like sitting going, ah, I've been there. Um, not me personally, but my husband had both of his hips replaced mm-hmm. um, like 10 years ago, you know, when he was 50. Right. And so um, both of them replaced at the same time. He was the 10th person like the state of Maine to have that procedure done both at the oh. same time, which was wild. Brave. Um, uh, brave. It was, to- oh my gosh, he was so brave about it um, because he went in there thinking like something like, oh, you know, I heard a little bit and the, and the doctor said, well, when would you like to schedule both hips to be replaced? And it was just a boom. <laughs> and he's like, what? Mm-hmm. Um, it's a shock. Yeah, just a total shock and so mm-hmm. forth. So, but, but it's a really big lesson to not only find, you know, find your people and so forth, but to be vocal where you can, even after the fact, like you just did, yeah. because you'll serve as a guide for people. I'm, I'm always, I tell that story all the time. People go, what? And I'm like, yeah, you had both his hips replaced like 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And it helps people who need that surgery because that surgery seems to be pretty terrifying for people. Terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, And that's funny because that's the second point literally is share your story. So find your people, share your story. And that, and like you said, it works both ways. You'll find people that can help you, but also you get to help others once you're through it. Perfect. All right. Should we keep going? I I know there's more point to that chapter, but that's that's okay. The the third strategy is really to make an ultimate comeback when there is no chance to pivot or roll. And then, like I said, there'll be steps in there, how to pretty much get over, you know, get through a life transformation. Love it. Okay. 
For sake of time, we're going to keep going just because yep. we've got a, um, I get it. eight points. Um, let's go to mm -hmm. chapter three. Now I'm in I'm in the orange belt, right? Orange belt is about blocking. So we learned that if we don't learn to block all the incoming punches and kicks, we're going to spend more time on the floor than we'd like. So mm -hmm. this is about styles of blocking. And in martial arts, essentially, in general, there's two styles, hard styles and soft styles where we blend with the incoming assault and only to redirect it, right? So if you can, again, put yourself just in a situation where you've had to set a powerful boundary recently, where do you go? Do you like to do hard styles of setting boundary or can you do a little bit more soft? Um, it, it Again, every situation is different and calls for something different. And also in this chapter, you'll get to kind of examine your levels of confrontation, comfort with confrontation for yourself and Essentially, there's no wrong way of doing it. The point is there are many options on how to set boundaries in your life and lots of examples in the chapter. Um, find what's comfortable for you and just practice doing them. Yeah. But we've got another question for you. So this is from somebody in their 50s who's saying, you know, I don't know what's comfortable for me anymore. Where should I start? That's a good mm. one. I, that really is. sometimes there it's like what is that ache yeah yeah um it, it's particularly in in the setting boundaries um if you yeah. don't know what's comfort read the chapter because it'll give you lots of examples and if you read maybe some of the hard styles of blocking which are probably more um useful like out on the street right when yeah. someone's getting too close to you or insulting you or outright you know being kind of abusive then a harder style is is more than necessary sometimes right in a more in a more social setting or with family members or even at work where people are encroaching on your boundaries mm, you know sort of insulting you i call it something a complice assault where someone kind of says something and you're like was that a compliment or an insult like <laughs> yeah. you look really good for your age, age yeah. it's like that <laughs> I used to get, you look really good for having four kids. And I'm like, um, I don't know what that is exactly. I don't know what to do with that. What? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. there, there are soft blocks in there that you can use like, oh, that, that made me feel, fill in the blank. Was that your intention? Or what exactly did that mean? Just asking a question back so you can stand in your power and not walk away thinking like, oh, was I just insulted? Like, you know, we go to the other major diet or yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. really funky, funky right? Thing. Yeah, exactly. So, no, I get it. Well, hopefully, um, that chapter will help you give. Have yeah, no, I think that's really helpful. Um, mm -hmm. Anything else in chapter three that you wanted to go through? Because I, you know, I love going through chapter chap chapter by chapter with you. Yeah, no, we helpful. can move on to green belt. Okay, I'm a green belt now. You're a green belt now, and now right. it's time to harness. <laughs> Yeah. Harness the power of your voice. Essentially, we start to, well, martial artists use a vocal technique called a kiop, which translates to a spirited yell, right? And we use that on every punch and kick to accentuate it. Um, also, possibly to intimidate our opponent. You start the kiop when you're a white belt, but at green belt level is when you're really feeling it. Because in the beginning, it feels weird to kind of go, kiop. Right. Or you, you actually get to choose your own word that you use. Um, but at that level, it starts to feel like, oh, wow, I, I have a really powerful voice and, it, and I'm and I'm using it in this loud and powerful way. And that can spread to other areas of our lives. Right. So powerfully communicating, whether that be setting boundaries, asking for the promotion or raise that you deserve, stating your rates if you own your own business, um, you know, all these things that. My, even my myself, myself or and many other women and people in general, right, have a hard time expressing. Yeah, it could be really uncomfortable. So so learning to use your whole body, your physiology, your tone and the words that we say out loud um, in a powerful way. And then we really round out the chapter with the words that we say to ourselves. So this, mm -hmm. I think the most important part of the chapter is mastering your inner dialogue. Um, and we go through, you know, affirmations and just catching those negative thoughts before they start to spiral, recognize them. We can even talk to them and thank them and have them move on and then put something powerful in their place. 
when I think about being a badass, I think about knowing my value and not giving away my power, not self-sabotaging, not, you know, being as confident as I can be. Do you want to, do you want to tackle that a little bit? Not with me personally, but just in general, that topic of, you know, just giving away your power all of the time. Yeah. I mean, I would, yeah. And that would probably go back to orange belt about setting boundaries, right? When we're, and I I do want to say that so many people unconsciously give away their power. Like they're not even recognizing it. Again, I'm sure I've been there and I've definitely been there now that I think about it, mostly in relationships um, in my past when I'm putting everyone else's needs without even considering my own. Mm -hmm. Uh, That to me is the biggest way we give away our power. Another way that we unconsciously give away our power is the things that we consume unconsciously. And I don't mean just food. I mean, everything from our social media feed to the billboards we're taking in to, you know, people's energy that we surround ourselves with, Mm -hmm. all of that we are consuming. And my biggest takeaway would be to be a more conscious consumer with discernment. I want this in, I don't want this in. Um, And that leads us actually to Blue Belt as well, (laughs) which is the next chapter about elevating your energy and really protecting that energetic um, space of yours, right? Again, allowing things in you, you really want, but getting rid of those things that you don't want. Yeah. I always say to go through life, you need a good set of earplugs and a lot of bubble wrap. I like that. <laughs> you need earplugs and bubble wrap all day long. And these oh, I like the bubble wrap um, analogy a lot. I think of like a little bubble, a mm-hmm. pink, I, and I put it pink and I like protect my energy um, on a daily basis. And I think it's really important. Yeah. But I like the bubble wrap. Yeah. It's like, here you go. I, you know, my kids, I think about, I just think about them like going from their boys, you know, and, and going yeah. from, you know, the house to growing up high school, they're all in college and all that stuff. It's, you know, it's a lot you go through and we as human beings go through so much and mm. we, you know, we have a, a filtration system, you know, in my book, I talk about like a personal filtration system and it's like, yeah. you know, the stuff comes at you and what are you going to allow to sink in and what are you going to, you know, put that bubble wrap on and be like, mm, I'm good. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's boundary setting is so, so, so important. Don't you think? Oh, and it just covered it, the whole, your whole book is like boundary setting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. In a really yeah. badass way. Um, <laughs> have another question. Um, somebody wants to, they've seen you before and they've seen you actually teach self-defense. Oh, cool. Is that something that you, you do? do yeah. You know, right. Okay. Talk, let's talk about that a little bit. We'll give the sure. book a rest here for a couple minutes. Let no everything problem. sink in and we'll keep going after we, we do. Absolutely. Yeah. The self-defense part of, is, has always been my passion as I told you the story, um, of where it started. So in the last few years during the pandemic, Obviously, I thought that I wasn't going to be teaching self-defense anymore, but right now I teach to corporations and organizations that bring me in. I don't like have a dojo where I teach classes on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. So over the pandemic, it's funny. I was like, oh, okay, well, there goes my speaking business, my self-defense yeah. business. Like, but oh, what happened was within a year, I started getting more requests than ever. Um, and it's on one hand sad because the state of the country, a lot of the cities had increasing crime rates and targeted racial attacks and all kinds of stuff that really didn't make people feel safe. Um, So I was, and so I was happy that I was getting called on to help serve and teach people ways to feel more empowered, whether they're out in the street or even in the boardroom. Mm -hmm. Uh, So yes, I still teach self-defense, the physical part. Yeah, I love it. And and the book is kind of that way too. You know, it's like a giant metaphor of of mm-hmm. of yeah. um, self defense. So I, I love that. I love a I love a book with a strong metaphor throughout. So mental, okay. emotional, and spiritual self defense. Yeah, perfect. Yep. All right. So um, let's talk a little bit more about blue belt, though. We we touched oh. on it, but it, you know, elevate your energy. Tell me what you mean by that, because um, like I I like the first part of this chapter where you're talking about living in New York city. Do you want to share a little bit about your personal story? Cause I see the words hot mess here and, <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, I need to know more about this. What, what was happening to you in these moments where you felt like you needed a, a shift in your energy? For sure. Well, I just got so um, obsessed. I like was loving my martial arts so much. Um, and to, I was struggling to pay the rent. So I was a personal trainer. Uh, 
so I was just literally running around the city all day long in and out of subways uh, to clients' homes, getting back to the dojo on the mat for more training, more classes, teaching classes, taking classes, you know, on the side, all of it. So it was like all day long, this physical activity. Then at night, I was going full throttle on my social life, lots of wine and restaurant foods and you name it. Um, There was one point in New York where I had a terrible betrayal from a boyfriend that's in the book. And, you know, it was just like, I knew that this was not sustainable at some point. So at blue belt level, it's like taking an energy audit, right? Where where is my energy, my chi, my life force energy literally leaking out (laughs) or draining out of me? And where can I plug up those holes? So that's what um, the blue belt will take you through things like even just hydration. Am I Am I watering myself enough? Am I eating, you know, the right amounts of whole fresh foods? Am I um, sleeping enough? You know, and just really going through this checklist of simple things. What's not so simple for a lot of people is one of the things, which is examining what you rely on for artificial energy. So the things like caffeine and sugar and even alcohol and things that manipulate our moves and moods and our energy levels. Those are the things that we tend to lean into a little too much when we're the most stressed and when we need them the least. Yep. I agree with you. Um, So that's like, those are things that drain your energy in reality. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I believe there's room for them, but when we start to let them run us versus we're running them, that's where we're going to have. I was glad you mentioned the news in here too and, and social media and stuff mm-hmm. like that, not just substances, but also like the news and social media, because I know during the pandemic, one thing I, I couldn't do, mm-hmm. I just, I had to just shut the news off a yeah. lot. I'm yeah. like, I can't handle it. I've got, yeah. we've got enough going on here. I can't hear that on top of what's going on here. And I just, I, and it wasn't, it was mostly before I would go to bed at night. Mm. Like that has to come off at like eight thirty at night or nine o'clock at night. No, none of this before yes. I go to sleep at night. And it was a it was a boundary I put in place for myself and our family. And I'm like, no, because mm-hmm. it would give me nightmares and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 So I don't know. Smart. 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 <laughs> There's a social media detox and new. You know, you can do it around news or social media because a lot of us get our news from social media too. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing like Twitter in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. Keep going. Take me to what's my next color? Red belt. Red belt. Yeah. Red belt level is about uh, on the mat anyway. It's when we start to focus on Mm -hmm. slower forms of movement. We deepen our meditation, um, which helps enhance our intuition, so we can see a punch coming way before it has a chance to land. In life, that translates to having a, a mindfulness practice. So going within, connecting with your inner warrior. Um or whatever word you'd like to use, your spirit, your soul, your God, your universe, um, just having that inner that connection so you can hear the guidance that you're given, your inner GPS, your inner warrior, because it's always there guiding you, protecting you, leading you towards your most badass life, and, and nudging you away from the things that pull you down. But we just have to be present to, to make sure we can hear it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. How about listening? Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that hard sometimes when we talk all the time to like to be like, mm-hmm. I gotta not interrupt. I gotta listen. I gotta <laughs> it's mm-hmm. tricky, isn't it? It's very tricky. So there is a there is a little challenge in that chapter to just the next few few conversations you have, try on just listening. Just listening, just taking in the other person's energy and words and if See if you can not just hear what they're saying, but hear what they're not saying. Um, things like that, very nuanced things and conversations that usually get passed over because we're not fully paying attention. So it just helps you develop better relationships, protect yourself, all kinds of things. Yeah. yeah. All right. Love a book with great exercises too. The book is really packed with like narrative from you and then exercises that you can actually um, implement, you can write in the book if you want to. There's there's yeah. lots of good stuff here. All yeah. right. Take me to chapter seven. Are there eight chapters or seven? Wait, am I seven? Seven. Okay. So now I'm the black belt, even maybe after listening to this, right? 
Yes, yes. You're going to earn your maybe spiritual black belt. That's what someone said to me the other day. I was like, oh, I like that. They said, thank you. Spiritual black belt. Um, So as a martial artist, when I used, when I first started, I would watch the black belts, these fierce, a lot of women in the, in the school that I trained in. And Mm -hmm. I was so impressed and they were, you know, all had their sword forms and their bow staff and they just looked so badass. So I was like, that's what black belt is being about. I want that. But then as I got closer to my black belt test, I realized it's about so much more. In fact, in order to be a candidate to test for black belt, at least in the school I went to, you had to volunteer 100 hours of teaching before you even could test because black belt is about, at the end of the day, leadership and being a mentor, a teacher, a coach to help others rise up the ranks after you. Um, so that is what the, the chapter is about. Essentially, how do we all, we all have accessibility to leadership in our life. We can all be a leader in our communities. And, and really, how do we do that? And it's about taking stances, right? We drill physical stances in martial arts, but in life, we can take stances for other people, for causes, especially in the face of adversity right. and really staying grounded and steady when adversity is trying to knock you down, right? That's how we grow our power and our influence and really our overall badassery. That's what it's about, yeah, being like, a badass. I like, um, but, you know, like being a, being a Nancy. <laughs> like a yeah. Nancy star. I like that. More yeah, like a Nancy. I, Yeah, and like I said, you know, sometimes I like to read the end of the book first to determine if I'm going to read any of it at all, really. Yeah. I, I do the same thing. This is great. The 26, the 26 ways. To take a stand um, for other stand women. For women, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of sad we have to write this, though. I know Talk about this a little bit. Why? Why in 2022 are we still having to be badasses and take a stand for women and all this stuff? Give me, give me a little bit without, you know, because men are incredibly value valuable part of my life, your life, and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, I know mm-hmm. the men around us are are you know cheering us on. My yeah. our, my boys are all like, "You go, mom." You know, that kind of thing. But we don't have that, do we? Yeah, not well, not everyone has that, unfortunately. And I mean, when we when we team up with our sisters globally, I write I like to think of us global. Globally. Right. Yeah. And then, then I mean, you just look at statistics. And for me, because of the self-defense background, I look first at statistics of violence against women. And when we said said, look at it globally, one in three women will be the victim of some kind of sexual violence in their lifetime. That's heartbreaking to me. Sure. Yeah. One in three, look at your life, right? Look at the women around you, one in three. And here in the States, maybe it's one in four to five. The numbers aren't, aren't very clear because most assaults go unreported. But still, I mean, that's what we live. We, If that's never happened to you, you know someone it's happened to. So we live with that as a collective backdrop. So many women don't feel safe just going for a walk late at, at night. night. Yeah. You know, and we're told from a young age to watch our backs, to not go out alone, to watch our drinks. Someone might spike it and try and like hurt us. I mean, it's like think of all the things that we've been told like that. I mean, that was yeah. Keep going. I sorry, I just interrupted you because there's a list of like as women were told, you know, don't leave your drink unattended, don't walk down that alley, don't walk here, don't walk there, don't do this, don't go in your car, and don't parking lot. <laughs> there's like this lot, list of stuff. And it's like and, and men don't like mom training or dad training even, mm-hmm. and um, it's it's sad. And I, you know, mm-hmm. so I I said that to somebody, and they're like, "That's what you guys think of us?" If, you know, kind of thing. It's like, well, well, how can we not? That? You know, like that. <laughs> that is everybody, but yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the hard reality. So, so that's the backdrop we live with. We're always you know, kind of on our toes and having to think about safety. Yeah. These if, what if scenarios. Um, So I just say, if we can walk around with the knowledge of what happens and then feel more empowered instead of paranoid, that's where we get to take our power back. Mm -hmm. Right. And I do, you know, think that everyone should learn some actual physical self-defense too, because it does make you feel more, more in control um, and a little more confident as you walk through this world. Yeah, love it. All right. Um, anything else? Like, what haven't we covered? I know we went kind of through. We co- covered the book. Basically. Oh yeah. What else do you want to talk about? Just uh, like, what's a? I 
there's a question here that somebody said, like, yeah. what's your what's a typical day like for you these days? Like, mm. how's, how's the pandemic um, mm -hmm. after the pandemic? Yeah, what are you what are you doing? I see you out and about. I see you on TV. Um, and I read that I, I'm going to keep going for a second. I read that you were the person who taught Carrie Fisher self-defense. I just yes. read that. I'm like, I didn't know that. That's cool. <laughs> well, a little bit on the Today Show. Um, yeah. Carrie Fisher, so Princess Leia. Yeah. Um, self-defense and it was so fun she she was a riot may she rest in peace but um essentially my my days are always different in fact the last three weeks i was traveling for this book tour but the book tour was really what i would normally do in september which is travel speak to a lot of realtors and september happens to be realtor safety month so i go from you know different states and groups and a lot of women's organizations and do these art of badassery talks and or a safety and self-defense training. Um, now we just added the book to that, to those, you know, options. So I've been out on the road this week. I'll be home and I'll be doing some virtual events as well and or lovely podcasts like Elizabeth. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, it has been so much fun getting to know you. I hope you'll come back and hope you write articles for the magazine and the website. I love whatever else we can do together. And uh, I just want to, let's hold your book up one more time, mm -hmm. your website and everything. Here's your book, The Art of Badassery. It's available wherever books are sold. And um, yeah, I'm just super excited for it. It's a really great book. And, Thank you. Uh, I don't say that about every book. And I bet <laughs> I know. I know. When I write mine, I'm like, you know, I got to write something that I would actually go in and purchase. Yes. <laughs> right? Totally. Yeah, I agree. And the cover art too, right? It's oh, like, it has did to Larissa do this. Is this a Larissa? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Larissa. Larissa. Larissa thank you. Yes. Yeah. I actually so, bought a bunch of copies of your book and gave them out already. Oh my so God. Kind of fun. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, on my to-do list, I'm getting your book and I'm reading it thank you. in October, my birthday month. Perfect. Well, happy birthday. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. And everybody, there's her website. And again, your book. And it was a pleasure speaking with you. Best Thank of you luck are. with your success in your book and, and everything that you've got going on. And I hope to come back again. Thank you. And thanks, everyone, for watching and your questions. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Um, this will turn, just so everybody knows, this will turn into also an audio podcast. So you can listen to this in audio format wherever you wherever you listen to your podcasts. And then also this will be posted on YouTube. But this did air live all over Facebook and LinkedIn. So we appreciate you being with us. And you have free replays and you can always share the show. So we're very grateful for your support. I know as authors, what are we grateful for? People seeing our book. <laughs> Yay. And our messages and all that good stuff. So anyway, all right, everybody. Thank you. Everybody knows I hate ending shows, but we got to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care. Thank you again.